Plate, in the original mythological sense of, uh, of what we know, is a semi-goddess who lives in, in the swamp. Uh, so she's half human, half, half goddess. She lives there with her water nymphs. And um, she is unhappy in, in love and she would like to get higher on the ladder of, of, uh, of a ranking, higher in the... Um, she wants to become a goddess as well, because right now she's just half a goddess. And she is full of fantasy. She is a woman that really believes that love does exist. Perhaps she has not really found the right guy yet. And she falls in love also very easily. This, the story starts in, in this opera with her passion for Citeron, for instance. And then all of a sudden, the biggest surprise of her life comes. I suppose she's around let's say 55 or 60 years old, who, who knows? And then all of a sudden she gets this gift told by Mercure that uh, Jupiter, of course the highest in ranking of all, is willing to, to have an affair with her or has set his, his mind on her. So she's totally overwhelmed and immediately believes that this is the true love that she was waiting for all the time. So immediately her passion for Citeron is gone and she focuses with full body and mind, totally hysterically, I would say, on the passion for Jupiter. Gets married to him, not understanding that behind her back everybody is making jokes the whole time, especially in this version by Robert Carson. Um, she doesn't understand that basically she's being tricked until she discovers that Junon, uh, the wife of Jupiter, uh, that she has been played a trick on by using and abusing Plate. And Plate is silly enough to only understand that at the very, very last minute of the opera. And then, of course, the whole theater falls in front of her, like, okay, I understand I've been tricked, you know? They played a trick on me. And then she gets furious, and so furious that um, it becomes life threatening. So that is the story of Plate. So the, the path towards creating this Robert Carson version of Plate uh, started a couple of years ago when we did the very first world premiere of this opera in this version here in Theater an der Wien in Vienna. Um, I had worked with Robert before as uh, Arnalta in L'Incoronazione di Popea in another production also here in Vienna. And, um, I had done in the Netherlands, where I'm from, some, some Baroque operas already in transvestite roles as well. So I was used as a, as a high tenor who does not sing uh, like a counter tenor in the falsetto, but a high tenor who sings like a tenorino, you know. Um, somebody with a high chest voice and who could, in the German market, be seen as a spiel tenor or a character tenor, you know. And in the French music, we call him the haute contre la française, but he's not a counter tenor. Those sort of voices, they often play women in 18th century music. And of course I knew of the existence of this beautiful opera um, and I was willing to do audition for it years ago. And then William Christie liked what I did. Robert also thought I was the right person. And then I basically started reading about Plate. Uh, of course I bought the score. Uh, there were one or two recordings even. So I had an image of the piece, but I was not very aware yet at that moment what sort of version this would become. I was not aware then that it would become a very glamorous Parisian fashion show with mirrors and silver and glass and, and everything that the viewers can see on this recording. So when that started, I mean, you, you can, you can try to shape in your head and in your own study practice room behind the piano or with a voice teacher. You can do as much as you want, but only once the project really starts in the theater with the director and the conductor, then you start to understand what is your path. You know, so then we understood that we were not going to make a plate that looks like um, a bad made up guy uh, in a sleazy bar who tries to do a female act, no, because that could be an option also to make a sort of man-wife thing. But we immediately felt that this would have to become extremely feminine, extremely 
in a way actually beautiful and touching, you know. So the, the goal and the aim from the beginning was to show the audience that this woman is a woman of flesh and blood. Like we can all imagine women like this, you know. We all have an aunt or perhaps a grandmother or a mother who has nobody in her life. Very sad, especially at this moment now in this Corona year. Um, and who would love to fall in love again and who would definitely believe if it would happen, you know. So we wanted somebody of flesh and blood who would also be able to tell the story in all its tragedy at the moment of the, of, of the revealing of the truth, the trick by Junon and Jupiter. So that's simply a matter of doing, trying, um, Fingerspitzengefühl is what the Germans say, you know, um, trying things with colleagues also, because the combination within the cast is also very good. So it means that the people interlink very well, um, vocally I find, but also especially theatrically. So all these aspects absolutely contribute on this path to how to create a role. And people say then, in the end, they said back then and also now, they say to me, is it very difficult to play a woman in general? And is it very difficult to play a woman like Platé? And I must be very honest, no. Because what I do is basically what I did when I was five or six years old. I remember, and I'm sure that everybody also knows what they did when they were a child. You, you take some clothes from your mother or your father, it doesn't matter, or your older brother or sister, you, you dress up, at a birthday party and you start to sing, if you like singing and playing, playing. I was a child like that. So I did that when I was very young, you know? So I, I feel that actually being Platé now, at 51, is also uh, imitating Abba when I was a child in the mid-70s. So it's not so far away, actually. What I also think that contributes very much to the creating of this role is, of course, not what I sing and play from from my own feeling but it's also the whole setting around me as we as we know this the setting is um, during Paris Fashion Week which means that this whole uh, uh, all the dancers and all, all the singers of the choir and all the other solo singers they're all very glamorous looking and all very uh, well shaped and all very thin you know and then, as soon as Platé comes in, of course, you see a lady, probably over 50 years old, who, is a, who has some kilos extra. Okay, for that world, that is extremely funny. And they see immediately, that old woman is out of character. What on earth is she doing here? So that also creates the vulnerability of Platé as a person in the context of everything around her. And she wants so much to be part of that beautiful world, that gl glamorous, luxurious world. And she actually thinks she is, because she gets a beautiful dress from Jupiter, she puts it on, she has the feeling she looks good. Actually, she does look okay, I think, but as an older aunt of somebody, not like a glamorous girl in a Paris Fashion Week. So there's the big contrast between the whole group and this figure of Platé. It is I think impossible to do in general work like this if you don't honestly enjoy it but this particular role for me is so much fun to play this it's it's a very tough role i mean it's it's long it's it's high it's a lot of different kinds of of, of tunes and a, a lot of ornamentations also which william christie is very picky on so it has to be very properly done so it's a lot of things together and Robert Carson is of course also a very demanding director so it's not very easy but once the click is there uh, in the whole process it's incredibly funny to do it I mean it's tough but I'm enjoying it from A to Z and it's really the role of my life.